everyone, it's me, X Canadensis, and for today's video, we are going to be doing things that I hate about my dolls. I don't normally like to make videos that have any kind of negative connotation to them because of the way that people run off with them, so I need to set a few ground rules for this. First of all, if these things don't bother you, don't let me talking about why they bother me make them bother you. Um, secondly, if you're offended by any of these things, I need you to like sit down and like stare at the ceiling for a second and just breathe and think about it. There's absolutely no reason to be offended by anything that I'm saying about my own dolls that you didn't create. Maybe if you're the person who decided that click jointed knees are law and every doll has to have click jointed knees, then maybe you can talk about being upset with me. But otherwise, there's no reason to be upset with me. I think it's really weird that people will take me saying I don't like a doll very much or me saying that this one's my least favorite very personally. That's weird. So don't do that. Like, I'm just telling you now, I'm not going to put up with that. I will just delete your comment. Anyway, um, I wanted to do this video because I'll mention things in some videos like, oh, I really hate when dolls do this. And I want to get into my, like, opinions on why. And I also want to give, like, for some of them, I'm going to give alternatives or, like, examples where it was done well despite the issue. Also, um, there's no being hypocrite here. I'm, I'm foreseeing a comment where I say, ooh, I really hate that some dolls have this. And, you're gonna, and then someone's going to comment, like, but that, you, your favorite doll has this too. You're just biased. The dolls that I picked for this video are just completely random. Like, just because I picked a specific Bratz doll for the shiny eyes thing doesn't mean that all of them don't have shiny eyes and that I'm specifically targeting this one. It's just ones that I thought would illustrate the point well on, on camera. All right. Okay. Okay. Let's get started. So I've been collecting dolls for a long, long time and I've had a lot of time to really sit and think about it and like really soak in all the dolls and there's some things that used to be my biggest pet peeves on dolls that just do not bother me at all anymore i used to really really hate when dolls didn't have articulated elbows it was like the worst thing to me and i would not buy dolls that didn't have articulated elbows and i think you can tell from what's going on behind me that i have evolved from that um i my the first dolls that i ever collected were monster high and when i was a kid i had a bunch of barbies and a few brats dolls um so it was really, really novel and amazing to me that they were articulated and I loved them so much more, but that doesn't mean a doll without articulation can't be good. So I have evolved from that opinion. I don't care anymore. Um, also molded on pieces, if done well, a molded on top, a molded on bracelet, a molded on glove, molded on leggings, I they are fine. Like, I don't care. There are times when they're done terribly, but if they're done well, it doesn't bug me that much. Of course, I would prefer fabric leggings in some cases because I can change them around, but you can get some really interesting things with molded on leggings. Like, you can get cool patterns and, like, 3D bits that you would not get otherwise. So, in general, like, I'm not bothered by molded on stuff anymore. Um, and I was never bothered by tinsel, but that's a big one for a lot of people. Like, this, this list has things that I actually, like, sat down and really thought about. Um, so... Let's get started. The first thing I want to convey to you, I have two dolls as examples of this, but this is a problem throughout like all dolls. Yesterday when I was filming my video about my Jenny dolls, they were doing it and it was really bugging me. Um, but I wanted to bring specific dolls over that do it really, really badly, such as this Jade doll and this Sasha doll. So this is a problem with like recent Bratz dolls, especially have this super bad, like they're the best example, I think. And you can, I wonder if you can tell what it is. It's when the paint is shiny. So I understand that paint is gonna be slightly shiny. And especially if you have a big surface area of paint, it's gonna be shiny. But some dolls don't have the shine where they're... Let me make the camera focus on them specifically. If you look, Sasha's eye paint is really flashing back at you. And Blondie, Blondie's getting washed out. Blondies doesn't do that and it's just a difference in the type of paint they use this UV stuff that they do where they print the Stuff directly on the dolls faces. It's so bad, but you can even get it in dolls that don't have that. So Jade for example Her eyes do it too. It's not as bad, but you can see it This really bugs me because I like to do like doll photography and I also like to take videos of my dolls, right? If I'm trying to show you a doll and the whole eye is missing because it's just flashed back it's not very fun. Let me show you with an LOL tween too. Their eyes, oh my god. So they're going for this like shiny eye look on these and I understand that but it makes these dolls nearly impossible to photograph. I did a couple, um, I used to do a lot more doll photography. I haven't been doing it as much lately because I've just been so busy um, which is a shame because it's one of the things that I love to do the most with my dolls and I got so many more dolls. It would be so fun to start doing it again but that's neither here nor there. Anytime I take a picture of these ones, I gotta go in and edit the pupil back on their eye because I don't know and I see it all the time in other people's pictures and I'm not being like my photography is better it's nothing like that but 
I can't stand it when I can see the ring light in the eyes or I can see like the lips are gone because they um they were flashed out. Well, ring light in the eyes with LOLs can actually be cute. I'm not going to say always, but in general, like if you were to, if I were to try to photograph this doll and her eye disappeared like this, like you see what I mean? It really, really bugs me. And it's not just eyes, any paint that ends up shiny like that, that's not intended to be shiny. And you can have shiny paint like glitter, like highlighter, even the original Rainbow High Dolls, I really don't like that um, super sweaty look that they have. I think it's interesting and I'm glad they are the only ones with it. There's some other Rainbow High Dolls that have it, but you know, in general, they are more matte or they have glitter instead of just having the shiny paint. It just really bugs me. And this is something across the board for me too. Sorry, this one I'm going to go on about for a while because it's one of my biggest issues. These aren't in particular order, but you can think like, oh, I thought, I thought of them in this order. So maybe this is the order. This is a big thing too, like when I was making a lot of stuff on my Cricut machine, like doll wings and stuff, glitter that you cut out, or glitter for crafts that's already applied to paper comes in two forms, rough and coated. People like coated glitter because it doesn't shed anywhere. Rough glitter actually bounces light the way that glitter is supposed to, while coated glitter, I should have brought them up here as an example, maybe I'll insert a clip here. All right, so these are two different types of, this is scrapbooking paper and this is vinyl. Um, and these are something that I would cut on my Cricut machine, right? This is rough glitter, so no matter what direction I put it in, it never has a big line of... And I'm using my phone flash right now. It just will never have a big line of glare, and, like, the glitter all bounces light in different directions. This is coated glitter, and this is, like, sticker vinyl. You see how it gets these harsh lines, and you don't get the bouncing light as much? The point of glitter is the way it bounces light. That's why it's so pretty. And you're getting this little spot of brightness, but if I don't put the flash directly in one spot like that, you don't get that. But with this, you absolutely cannot avoid it. And this doesn't have a super high glare as other ones do, but you see what I mean? Like it just gets this really ugly glare and they don't bounce the same. Anyway, I know that's like really specific, but it's something that absolutely so drives Coated me. glitter actually bounces the light in all the directions, which is the point of glitter. While coated glitter gets this horrible glare, no matter what, you can't not have that glare. It bothers me so much so this isn't just something with dolls it's just something across the board i cannot stand when it shines and loses all the detail because dolls like um my sasha doll or my omgs they have like really interesting paint going on i want to be able to see it but i hate that shine and you can have that shine in some areas and not others and like i'll think it works like if the eye is shiny where the like iris and the the whites of the eyes are that kind of works for me but if the eye if the entire eye looks like it was just stamped on in one piece and it's all shiny no no i hate it and it's I don't ever think that is an intentional design I think it's just something to do with the methods that they use it's not something that's a deal breaker for me none of these are deal breakers on their own but ooh, it bothers me so we're gonna put a little check mark there next is um misprinted eyes this is never intentional I wanted to do things that are actually intended to exist I guess but this one I just have to say because this is the biggest thing that will keep me from buying it all and when I first started collecting I never looked out for this so a lot of my early dolls my monster high dolls have this so this is a quality control issue and with rainbow high i'm very hyper aware of it when i'm looking at them i try to make sure they're like i their eyelashes are even their eyebrows are even it just to me no matter how good a doll is when their eye is completely misplaced it just completely ruins them for me and it's really sad I, all of my dawn of the dance dolls except um laguna have this really bad look at that look at that I don't know if you guys can tell, and if you can't tell, don't go out of your way to try to be able to tell because you will hate half your Monster High collection. When I started collecting Monster High, Cleo was one of my favorite characters. I, I had like a lot of favorite characters, but Cleo was like one of my first favorites. And I bought a ton of Cleo dolls, um, trying to find one that I love. Skull Shores Cleo, I bought, or I was a kid. I begged for Skull Shores Cleo and I got the Skull Shores five pack and I was so happy. Um, and I was so bummed because her, I could not connect with her. I could not understand why. And then I got the, like the classroom two pack Cleo. I got like a few Cleos. And after a while, I just did not buy another Cleo ever again because I hated them all. And I couldn't figure out why. And this happened with Draculaura. This happened with Claudine. Like there were certain dolls that I just kept getting misprinted dolls and it drove me crazy. And I could not understand why I wasn't connecting with these dolls. I remember Wonder Wolf. I was so excited about her. I went out specifically to get her and I saved my money and I was so excited about Wonder Wolf. And I just picked out the first one that I saw. You know, you saw the doll on the shelf. I just grabbed her and took her to the front and bought her. And then I get home and open her and I hated her. Like I could not connect with her and I couldn't understand why. Um, and finally, now that I look back at these dolls, every single Monster High doll that I decided was my least favorite that, or that I didn't like that much had a really bad misprinted eye, just like this. That's what happened. Um, and it, it'll really ruin 
a doll for me and Monster Eye had it really bad so I hope they figure this out um because it's it's a lot I understand quality control slipping through the cracks but I'd reckon to say half or over half of Monster High dolls have this problem if you look on eBay and just search any Monster High doll and start scrolling it's bad it's and it's only certain face molds I feel like they figured it out for some face molds but not for others but like um Laguna has it super bad too you can get Lagunas two of the same Laguna doll made in the same factory at the same time that have really really different faces because some of them will have their eyes printed higher or further apart or lower it's it, it just oh it, it bothers me it bothers me so much um all right this really bugs me and it's bugged me since I was a kid so I didn't really like dolls a lot when I was a kid and it's because the things that I like about dolls now generally were not available or I just did not know about them with dolls at the time I want to be clear there were lots of amazing dolls that I had as a kid my Mycene dolls, for example, I love them a lot, but there were some things about them that really bugged me, and I I was just a kid, you know, so if a toy didn't work for me, it just didn't work for me, and I would move on. Um, this is a huge one. I can't remember which of my dolls had this as a kid, but I know they did because it really, really bothered me, and I would specifically not play with them. So there's two main modes of play with your dolls, standing up and sitting down. I need them to be able to do those two things. As long as they can do those two things, that's pretty good. I like when they have articulation, but it's not 100% necessary. When they can't sit, you miss out on every single playset. You miss out on playing with them with other playsets. You miss out on just sitting them down. And dolls can't stand up on their own very well. They never come with stands. I was going to put not coming with stands as a pet peeve, but that seemed like it covers like 90% of dolls that have ever existed, so I decided to take that out. Um, Anyways, so this is a Royal Enchantables doll, and I love this doll. I think she's amazing. And she only has the basic... Well, actually, she has knee joints. So she has pretty decent articulation, actually, but... She does the straddle sit, and there's no way to pull her legs together without her, like, unsitting, right? So I hate this straddle straddle sit thing and I feel like some Barbies that I had as a kid might have had this because they couldn't use the chairs that I had for them, and it really bugged me. It's just... Ugh. It, it really bothers me. I don't know. It, I can't stand it. I don't even think I need to explain to you why, um, you know, they can't use their accessories. Oh, you know what? I was going to mention this too, but I couldn't find any good examples of it because I don't have the dolls from Monster High that bug me with this. Color Islands, and I'm calling it that. So when, when an accessory is huge and right in the eye shot and it has absolutely no detail to it, so it's just a color island like this, it looks like a disaster. This one's kind of saved by the fact that it's a little bit shiny, but ooh, it bugs me. Um, the color islands. And a lot of Monster High dolls actually do have this. Not like a lot, a lot, but quite a few of them. And it's, I assume it's because of um, budget cuts along the way somewhere. But anyway, the straddle sit bugs me a lot because the fix for it is so simple. It's so simple. All you have to do is carve a little bit more on the joint. So I'm going to lift her skirt up so I can show you. So the reason they sit, they straddle sit is because when they're coming up, they get stuck here and they have to pull the leg out to actually be able to move it. And then if you want to pull the leg back in, it has to go further down. See, the fix for this is just to carve this out a little bit more. So I could actually carve this joint out more on this doll and she would be able to sit normally. Why would the, why would the people who created the doll and created the doll's mold overlook this? And there's no extra cost to not having this, you know? It would actually be less material because you carve it out a little bit more and it gives you so much more play value to the doll and it allows for so many more play sets so I just can't get on board with it I don't understand it it just seems like lazy design at that point on the part of the body maybe I'm missing something but there's absolutely no reason to have them straddle set like that the only thing I can think of is something like a really younger demographic type of doll straddle setting is a little bit better of a balancing mode but I don't know I don't really view that as that much of an excuse and I've never seen it in a way that I'm like oh this seems intentional it's just bad and I really 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 hate it so <laughs> anyway that's the v-sit I hate it um next is bad articulation so when my doll is articulated and I'm on board and I'm super excited about about it and it seems like they have bait and switched me and I'm so sorry to say it my Jack's girlies have made it into the video they're actually in here multiple times so these are some of my favorite dolls of all time so saying this isn't saying like I hate these but this bugs me a lot and this is for the same reason as the straddle sit because the fix for this costs no extra. All you had to do was consider it when you created the doll. So Jack Specific Wings dolls have, they're like pretty jointed. They have the same amount of joints as a Monster High doll, but their elbow joint is so ridiculous. So this is the full range of motion of this joint. All you have to do to give this more motion 
is do a tiny little like U shape here and it doesn't even mess with the design of the doll at all. It doesn't make the doll look weird. It doesn't do anything like that. So I don't understand why it's like this. And when they continue to have it like this too, I just, I don't get it. Like I understand maybe the early dolls having an issue like this and then fixing it along the way. And I don't know, it really, 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 really bothers me. <laughs> Cause you can't, you know? And I understand if say it's a arm that can bend to a right angle and that's the articulation. I would prefer if it could come all the way in, but that would need a double joint, I understand. But anything less than a right angle on this kind of joint is unacceptable because all you had to do was carve it out a little bit. That's it. That's that's all you had to do. I don't understand. So again, I could just come in here with a hot knife and fix this. I'm not going to because I have so many of these dolls. And I, if it really bugged me that much, I could fix it. But imagine like as a kid, they're not going to like be like, oh, maybe I could carve this joint out a little bit. And I've done it before with my Rainbow High Dolls. And to me, like the amount of work and the risk to my doll of using like a heat gun to melt their plastic a little bit and then slowly come in with an exacto knife. It wasn't, um, the opportunity cost was not high enough, let me say. Um, and Rainbow High is a big example of this. So I'm pretty sure on my Instagram, like I could find in my little archives, especially on my story archives, me talking about this. When Rainbow High first unveiled, like we first saw them, we saw um, prototypes of them at Toy Fair in 2020, I think in like February. We saw that they had double jointed elbows and double jointed, well, they're not double jointed elbows, I'm sorry. It kind of looked like they did, but the big thing was that they had double jointed knees. I was so excited about this. I hate I hate the appearance of double jointed knees. I think they're ugly, but they they provide a lot more motion. And let me give you an example from the archives here. Live dolls were absolutely groundbreaking for the amount of articulation that they had on a Playline doll. So this is, um, what are these called? Making Waves, Katie? Um, this is what the double joint allows her to do. And she would actually have more articulation if they didn't have this like big calf situation, but they, it's fine. Like it's not a big deal. They have this really, really fantastic articulation. And you see how they carve this joint out a little bit more so they could get kind of an, like a right angle, like they get a perfect right angle there. Just every single joint on these dolls was really respectfully done. They clearly knew what they were doing when they were molding this doll. It works well, the body doesn't look weird. And I, I, I like, she, she dropped her flip flop again. I absolutely love Live Dolls for their articulation and they were so exciting for me as a kid because not as a kid, but like as a young teenager collecting dolls for the first time, these were so exciting to me. So, and it's not common to see the double joints, right? Like Made to Move Barbies, their gimmick is that they have that. It, so it's not like the standard for Barbies, it's a gimmick. So I was really excited that Rainbow High had them and Rainbow High dolls have a pretty different body type than a lot of other dolls. So it's really, really cool to see them with this ankle, or this, not an ankle joint, sorry, this knee joint, I was so excited. And then I got home with them. Why is this double jointed? You're gonna have an ugly joint and not have the function of an ugly joint. And let me remind you what this joint can do if you carve it correctly. What is going on here? This is the exact same level of art. I know I dropped another flip flop if you're going to point that out, like I know. Um, this is the exact same amount of articulation that any other doll whose knee bends has, maybe it gets like a little bit, well, these are badly carved, so this is a bad example, but you know, like any normal doll with a knee joint that isn't a clip joint can get this right angle. Rainbow High has it a little bit higher. So was it worth the double joint? And double joints too. The reason more dolls don't do them when they provide so much more articulation is because it costs extra, right? Because you have to mold these pieces and you have to assemble them. And that's two steps instead of one step. Maybe more than two steps, I don't know. But for the assembly, you have to connect this to this and this to this. So why are you spending more to give me a useless joint? And I showed this in another video, but the Rainbow Junior High dolls actually have fully functioning double joints. Why has Rainbow High not fixed this? All they have to do, and I've done it before, where I carved um, both, this one's the main culprit here. I carved this out and it made it where they can fully articulate. I don't know, this just seems like a bad situation here because as a kid, I would have kept trying to push this thinking that it could go further and that would have broken the dolls and been really annoying. I don't know, I just, why did they do that? And I did grab a Pacific Coast doll here, but it's not just the Pacific Coast dolls. Um, I'm just now realizing that maybe somebody's gonna say like, oh no, it's because the Pacific Coast dolls have removable legs. And no, it's not. Some mainline Rainbow High dolls can get a little bit more motion. Like Cheryl's, Cheryl has a pretty decent amount of motion here, but she still can't touch her calf to her thigh, which is what we're going for. I just, I can't get on board with it. I don't understand it. I really don't understand it. Alrighty. The next thing, oh, we got pretty far, um, is the ankle thing. 
I hate this so much. It's so specific and it's specifically, I guess it's more of a calf thing. Um, it's very specific to techno dolls in this outfit. There's other dolls that have this and it really bugs me and I'll mention it every time. The pants are meant to come into the boot, I assure you. It's meant to be like a full bodysuit. But they decided to cut it off here. And if they'd cut it off like here, I would have been like, okay, like they tried. But they cut it off here. So there is absolutely no way, even from the front, to not have the skin showing. And it bugs me. Because you know that's not intentional. You know that's not the design. If it is the design, no, I don't like it. I don't like high waters at all. They really bug me. And with boots, it's just cursed. You can have it a little bit higher. And the boot, I mean, th these boots are clearly specifically shaped for a bodysuit, so this isn't a great example, but say like, you know, they were up a little bit higher like that, it would have been like, okay, I think that's intentional. But because they're here and because these are based off of a show, you can tell that this isn't intentional. It's just a disaster. It's a disaster. I hate it. it really, really bothers me. Um, And I mentioned it in the new Monster High Dolls, the... They're not Skelectors, what were they called? I don't remember, Haunt Couture. The Draculaura has that, where she has these ankle boots and then she has pants that are supposed to be a little bit longer, it looks like, but they're not. So there's this weird asymmetrical peak because the leggings are gonna like ride up her legs a little bit. So there's this asymmetrical peak of her skin there and it really bugs me. It's not as bad as with Techno, but ooh, it bothers me. Um, okay, I already did wonky eyes. So did I rip wonky eyes twice? I really did. Um, Printed on clothes. So I don't mean like printed onto the doll clothes. That's a whole nother beast. But do doll clothes that are printed on for their details. And I don't mean always. So I have two examples of dolls with printed on details here. So this is Just Sweet Blondie from Ever After High. And this is Wild Heart. What is your name? I forgot. I forgot her name. I'm sorry. I'm really blanking. Um. Anyway, they both have printed on clothing and in very similar ways. Like, right? Like Blondie has it on her skirt. And she also has it on her skirt. Blondie's skirt is three tiers and it has these little 3D bows on there. Hers is one piece of fabric that's sewn together in, all, in just three spots and it's not even hemmed. And every single detail you're seeing is printed on. So like the rips and the materials, this papery material, which I'll get into later, and the seams and the pockets. And I can get behind almost all of this being printed on. Like, again, these are almost all printed on details here. But adding the 3D touch and making the three-tiered skirt fixed it for me because it makes it where I'm not hyper-focused on how weird and flat it looks. I'm more focused on all of the interesting things going on with the outfit. All they had to do to fix this where it wouldn't have made this list or this doll wouldn't have been the example for me would be to actually stitch the yellow stitching on the denim that's it like that would have actually fixed it for me and to go the extra mile doing the belt loops and doing the little brads would be really cool but it's just and this is barbie like barbie's mo right now is to do this and it really really irks me um and you can have like a this isn't printed on this is ironed on but you know like if you had a printed on detail like that or the clothing has a printed on design on it stuff like that like i that's totally fine this is just crossing a line to me because every single detail is printed on this is just one piece of fabric it's just very glazy and cheap looking and you can really really tell this isn't something that I feel like if you were to hand a kid this doll with this skirt and this doll with a skirt that was actually detailed they would pick the detailed one it's just a mess and this isn't the designers I know this isn't the designers this is the cost cutting at the higher level um it's just so bad it's just so bad I can't stand it that's like a big thing for me and again like you can have printed on details I'm gonna grab one of my pretty cur dolls you can have printed on details like all of this trim here is printed on but then there's these 3d stars here and this 3d little white thing and that helps you distract like it helps with the illusion because I understand that these clothes can't be as detailed as you know like human being clothes like I'm, I'm totally on board with that they're smaller they don't have as much budget like I totally get it but ooh, it bothers me when they're just like they didn't even try when it looks like they didn't even try and I'm sure this isn't an insult to design designers because again I've seen what happens when somebody who works in Mattel makes a design that seems kind of intricate and interesting and then it goes through cost cutting and then the final product is like actual nightmare material so if I were to see the Wild Hearts crew like sketches they would probably not have that going on or even the prototypes I bet they don't have that going on it's just it's a shame and it really ruins some dolls click joint is kind of a big one to mention because it's pretty across the board in dolls it's like the joint so this is what I mean by click joint 
it makes that click sound. Sometimes they don't make the click sound specifically, but they are a knee joint. And the reason they're kind of cool is because you can't see a joint here. It just looks like a natural human knee and it is pretty. So I'm not super offended by these, but the reason I don't like them is because and you saw me get an extra click in there, but these are also breakable too. If you break one of these, like it will never move ever again. I can't get that extra click anymore. But anyway, this is like the extent of articulation on the click joint. Just sucks. You And you saw me get one more, but now I can't get it again. Yeah, there it is. But it'll pop right back down. Like it's not super stable there. I just, you see that? Um, and click joints do hold their pose relatively well and they are much better looking. And I know a lot of people prefer click joints, but for me, no, no, I want the articulation or nothing but the thing that's good about click joints is that it has it forced barbie for many many years to actually have leg articulation because if you look now because they're using those hollow plastic legs they don't articulate anymore there which is a shame um i think the the hinge joint makes more sense and it's probably cheaper because these these are like kind of rubbery and they have this whole armature inside if you've ever seen what a click joint looks like on the inside i'll put a picture here this is what a click joint looks like on the inside it's a lot of details it's it's kind of a lot going on so um yeah I don't know. They're not, I'm kind of neutral to them, but I almost always, I will prefer like a normal joint. That's a big thing for me with OMGs. OMGs are so well articulated, but then they have that click joint. So you can't do anything with their knees and it really bugs me. All right. Who did I bring over for papery clothing? Cause we have a lot of them. Ah, so my whole doll collecting career until very recently, all of the dolls that I collected generally had this papery plasticky clothing and I just kind of accepted it um and then I prefer this material that's more of like a it's kind of like flannel I don't know what to call it but you know it's it's closer to being doll clothing but or sorry it's closer to being human human clothing I didn't think you could use human clothing type materials I didn't think you could use like cottons and poly poly blends not just straight up polyester um I didn't think you could use stuff like that in doll clothes sorry you probably shouldn't use cotton but you know I didn't think you could use apparel fabrics when I found out that you can I was I was beside myself because I was collecting Jack specific Winx dolls ever after high and monster high for a while and I had a couple of live dolls and they had really nice clothing and I had some Bratz clothes and Bratz from when I was a kid and they had really nice clothing but I didn't realize that that was the standard until a lot of companies started cheaping out a lot more and it really shows and it looks so much worse. So this is one of my favorite examples of cheap weird doll clothes. So the, the top I can actually get behind it actually has a nice fabric. It looks good. It looks realistic. But the pants, I don't know what this is. The best thing I can describe it as is medical gauze. Is this the material used in scrubs? I don't know. It's thin. It's so bad. It's so bad. It's ugly. It looks weird. It's clearly you know what um that napkin they put around your neck when you're at the dentist to wipe all your like tooth stink on or like the blood when they're doing your surgery that's what this is foul foul i hate it and then clothes like this that are like listen i'm sorry about her hair by the way it is polypropylene <laughs> Um, I can fix it a hundred times and it will never look good. Well, the reason that I haven't fully fixed this doll's hair is because this is a Believic Stella wearing the Concert Stella outfit. I don't have the actual Concert Stella, I don't think. I need to get her. Um, so that's what's going on here. Anyway, or this is Enchanted Stella wearing. Anyway, same face, it doesn't matter. It's like, ugh, I don't know, I hate it. But the details aren't printed on. You win some, you lose some. And this is fantastic. This piece is actually really good. But, the, ugh, ugh. oh, plastic belts is another pet peeve of mine. I don't have that on the list, but I hate plastic belts a lot. They, they like, never click right and they fall off. And then the thing that they close with is always, like, a hole with a peg that you put in it. It never works. It's, ugh, I hate it. Um, especially for kids that don't have the best dexterity all the time because they haven't, like, developed the full fine motor skills at, at all ages. Having that stupid plastic belt that doesn't close correctly, ugh. Hair Amazing Noah, if you have heard that flower thing she comes with, I cannot close it to save my life. Mess. Um... I'm thinking of more like those barrettes that dolls come with that have the plastic here. Mm, I hate that. The hair clips that have the plastic and they, they stick into each other like this. Basically, they have like that hole and they, they pop right back open or they get this plastic stress on them. No. Anyway, um, I just hate the style of doll clothing. And um, a lot of modern Barbie has a lot of great designs here. Let me see if this Barbie that's sitting right next to me has this going on. She doesn't. Oh my gosh. I was going to like sit here and point out the pl the plasticky clothing, but she doesn't have it. Um, anyway, a lot of modern Barbies, like the majority of them, have this material, but printed on. 
and it's all printed on details like the Mod Hearts crew doll that I showed you. Absolutely foul. I hate it. I hate it so much. It upsets me to no end. It's just a disaster. I really wish they would stop doing that because it, it's... Ugh. All right. Um, ooh, Color Islands. I did write it down even though I couldn't find an example. Um, okay. This is about doll stands. The waist hugger stand is the tried and true stand. It kind of holds on via tension. It's not the strongest plastic in the world, so it kind of can bend a little bit. And that's how it sticks onto the doll. And then once it's on, especially ever after high, I had these really nice little pegs on them that helped, not pegs, but like little balls that helped it stay on really nicely. Um, this is the tried and true. You can play with your doll on the stand. You can move them around, like they will stay on the stand. I absolutely love that. I love this style of stand. And there's two other types of stands, two other main ones. Ooh, knee hugger stands suck too. I would have, I should have brought it over. The one that Holiday Felicia comes with, nasty. Anyway, the saddle stand. Now, I was a member of a lot of like Monster High spaces when Monster High all started to come with these saddle stands and people loved them. So I was like, yeah, these are great. And I, I really liked the idea of the saddle stands, mostly because I was just picking up on what other people were saying. Uh, which is why I want to make it very clear that you don't need to share any of my- She fell. So, because I had read so much that, like, people love these saddle stands, I was like, oh, saddle stands are great! Like, and you can't see the clip, and if it- if the doll has a dress, then, like, great, it looks amazing, but saddle stands suck. They suck! And unless it's, like, a click-in saddle stand, like, I can't- they're so bad. So, this is a Mycene saddle stand, and the Monster High ones were overall pretty similar to this. They just had a thinner pole with just the saddle on it. And a saddle stand just kind of sits between the doll's legs, and normally they don't snap in. Some of them do. Whereas these, like, snap the doll in, and she's in there for life. Like, she's in there. They're okay, but this is ridiculous and then also they'll use one length sorry about it all you poor thing um they'll use one length of pole and never change it so some dolls will have like madison does not reach the bottom because i guess her shoes aren't as tall as whatever doll they decided to make this for um and she can reach the bottom but it's hard to get both of her legs to reach it and it's just not great so they'll usually only make one like length and then all the other lengths um or all the other like sizes of shoe are screwed and it looks you see that shiny eye you see that? Let it bug you. Usually when I see a doll like this on my camera, I'll like move her so she doesn't have that. But no, I'm gonna let it bug you so that you can understand my point. Anyway, um, saddle stands are just, they're so specific. Sometimes they work really well. If it's a doll with a super tight dress and you can get it under there, it'll actually stay in place really nicely because they don't like fall forward like this. But overall, I just, I can't get behind the saddle, saddle stand situation. I just, I really hate them. See, even on display, I'm just trying to like stand her up and I don't know. Um, my other least favorite type of stand is a Kaiser stand. So this is a Kaiser stand. Kaiser was a company that made them specifically, I believe. Um, but you can buy these at like craft stores. These are like the doll stand if you're not like buying from doll brands that have doll stands. Um, these are pretty popular. Um, I don't understand why because after, at, with the advent of Monster High, there's a lot of bootleg versions that you can get for very cheap. Um, I understand that those aren't available everywhere. Like I get it. But these, every time I say I hate Kaiser stands, people get on to me about it. Like they're like, what? Those are the best stand. First of all, this was $1.47. These were from when my dad worked at Toys R Us. They were in the store displays, like the companies would send them with the store displays. So that's why I have these and I've never bought more. These are actually really, really good for a very specific condition. I'm trying to see if there's a Nona Nas surprise doll near me. No, there isn't. I was about to grab the tag off the kitty cat camper that's sitting right next to me. But anyway, Nona Nas surprise dolls are great in this. Plushies are great in this, stuff like that. But for dolls, these are just awful. And let me kind of show you. So they work really well for some dolls, but most dolls, like, I just can't. I hate them. So how they work is they, they're this, like, metal curled thing and a flat base. And I like how heavy they are. At least they, the dolls don't fall over generally. Um, and then there's a V of metal. And then the further down you go, the thinner these will be. And the further up you go, the more open they'll be. Oh, these are great for My Little Pony Sea Ponies, too, by the way. That's my main use for them. And I might buy more just for them because I, I like to use them for that. Anyway, um... My biggest problem with these is that the, it's never the right size for any doll. I guess it would work decent for Barbie, but I don't know. It's a similar thing where like, I just want my doll to feel secure on the stand. At least she stays on. These just absolutely are not my favorite. And they are another hip hugging stand. And I like will always prefer this style of hip hugging stand. I just think it works so much better. The dolls feel more secure. And these I just can't get behind. I like that they're metal. It's very luxurious feeling. I like that they have flat bases. That means you can like stack them and um, line them up really close to each other and stuff. Um, but 
I don't know. I just don't like these. Um, but there are uses for them just for, for my dolls. I hate them and they're expensive, which is the biggest thing. Like I'm not spending $20 on 10 doll stands and that would be a good deal for Kaiser stands. I hate it. Um, anyway, okay. The next one I just wrote stupid doll wings and luckily we've kind of weaned the herd here a little bit. So let me line up some wing stalls. So I love wing stalls and it's because I love dolls with wings. I love fairies. Um, I just, fairies in general in all media and all art, I just absolutely love them. They make me so happy. They're all falling over right now. I have to put these wings back on one of the dolls. Okay. So doll wings have had a lot of like ideas in the past and there's one that i didn't include in this video that i do hate um it's just because none of my dolls on display have it because i specifically removed them those pieces those dolls that just have one piece of plastic that's just stuck in the back those wings dolls that are like everyday dolls that um they'll have like it's just one solid wing thing it just kind of bugs me it's just kind of ugly i do like the glam magic dolls and i do like the like mattel wings dolls i i don't mind their um like one piece plastic wings but overall i don't like those i prefer this style Okay, so I've assembled the, the examples. A plus, oh my God, this is amazing. So Jax actually invented this. They have a patent on this, I think. This is groundbreaking. They actually move with like gears and like gravity moves one wing, which moves the other one. So they always move together. Oh, it's so fantastic. It's so good. And like to make the dolls easier to store, you can actually take each individual wing off of this mechanism to store them flat instead of having them stored like, um, and some dolls that have the Jack's mechanism by Witty actually won't, oops, won't have this. But, um, so if the, if they didn't come off, I just, the Jack specific wing dolls are such like a fever dream. They're so good. Anyway, um, you would have to store them like this and if you wanted to store them flat this is actually pretty dangerous they could bend you could break the mechanism it's not good so you can actually take each individual oh, that one just popped right off there's some issues with that like sometimes they're a little bit too weak and they pop right off this one's actually cracked oh well, that would be why it keeps falling off anyway you can store these flat and have the mechanism separate which you could just keep in the doll's back that's so good for when you're like moving and stuff it's just so smart these are amazing i absolutely love these um Jax did such a good job um, Witty Toys picked up on Jax. This doll's here for a separate reason. I'm sure you can tell why. Um, these are great. Um, these don't remove, so you can't store them flat. That's not as big of a deal, and you could store them flat this way, but they'll still have that mechanism poking up, but these are great. Like, I love this. Um, they're the same, but they're missing a couple of things, but still, like, they work for me. I don't mind. These are probably my, one of my favorites. They're, my true favorite, I'm going to show you in a minute, and it's not a wing stall. These have, like, okay, this might be my favorite. I'm not sure. These are good for play. The other version I'm going to show you is good for like photography and posing them and stuff. Um, and good for play too, but this is like the best one for play in my opinion. They flutter. It's it's similar to the Jax mechanism, um, but instead of being able to flap like this way, they go up and down with this. That's so cool. I love that. Um, it's really cool. Um, I feel like this was after Jax or before Jax too, so um, it's kind of interesting. Maybe Jax was inspired by that to make their own groundbreaking one. Okay, this I can't get behind, but I have two examples. So this is the talkback, like, singing Bloom. I think it's Bloom, You Are the Fairy, actually. She has just paper wings, essentially. It's just laminated paper. Um, I hate this, and there's several reasons. First of all, the glitter on some, like the Super Fate or the Jeff Preciosi dolls, the glitter literally comes off in flakes, like giant islands. It's so bad because they didn't, like adhere it properly to the wing that's horrible but these are just this like really flimsy material they never sit where you want them to they attached with velcro which is heinous to me um and they're like really really delicate so if you look here there's like a rip just from existing there's just a rip there like there's no way to keep these wings nice unless you literally always just have them sitting on display but even then like they don't want to stay where they're supposed to because they're just paper they're like they're being weighed down they're being like, they can't even hold their own weight mess. Okay. This is another... Oh, oh, whoa, what? Okay, I didn't realize these were stuck to the doll. Ooh, I forgot to bring the Disney fairies down. Disney fairies by Disney Store have a button in the back that basically makes them do this. And I can get behind that. Those are great. It's, it's basically this, though, so they don't need to be in the video. They are attached to the body, which I don't like. I don't... And this Ferngully doll, this is a Ferngully Crystal doll. I thought hers were Velcro, too. That's why I brought her over, so that I could explain that when wings are super small like this, do what you want. Also, this is a brat stand. Isn't this smart? It fits her waist perfectly, but she can fly. It's really cute. Um, 
but if they're like small enough wings i don't care if you use velcro like i get it you don't have to go out of your way to do stuff like this for it i understand like this is perfect for this doll in her design all right my absolute favorite style of wing and i have a lot of experience with fairy dolls again this is the try oh i hate the monster high cupid just has this necklace that holds your wings on which is cute but they like flap around or they don't flap excuse me they just fly off of her it's not great Okay, this is a Me and Me doll by Mattel. So Mattel made these, but they only really released them in Europe, which is a shame because these are some of the best like dolls that Mattel has done for like a licensed line. They're so cool. So first thing that I really like is that they have this, um, they're not a click joint. They just have this like Gumby leg essentially. That's cool. Um, they don't have articulation in the elbows or the wrists, which I wish that they did, but that's not a big deal to me. I wonder if they can sit. Okay, they can mostly sit right. That's fine. Their wings, this blew my mind because I've never seen this in a doll before and I've never seen it since. They have ball joints in their wings. So in the show, when they're like walking around, their wings are like this. And then when they fly, you know, they're all over the place. They fly around. But you have so many options for play and display and photography. You can have them facing straight forward. You can have them facing straight back for like a side shot. And there's a, there's a few things that you can do with these wings, but these are the best doll wings I've ever seen. Certain wings would not work like this, I feel, because this is a pretty basic design. Um, it's not basic at all. I think they're absolutely beautiful. They're like dragonfly wings, but they have these spots. I love me and me. The art style is so good. I will never shut up about me and me. I think it's really, really underrated. But, oh my god, they're so cool. It's so amazingly cool, and it's such a simple thing. I would never have thought of thought of doing ball joints though and I think they might actually come out I'm not gonna try too hard yeah so they don't seem to come out but they could and if it was like a line of fairies like fairytopia by Barbie for example which all have those stupid velcro wings but that was a long time ago so it's kind of like they didn't they didn't really innovate there uh, they just did whatever was already there um were there like fairy doll lines before that there, there were there were obviously um anyway I just love these wings so much and imagine like on a mix and match fairy style line where they come with wings that are on the joints that you can take out and then put in another doll and then have these balls it's just a masterpiece it's such a good idea i want to see this done again mattel did it too so mattel could do it again they're not going to because they're mattel <sighs> whoever designed this like is my favorite designer ever like this is ridiculous this is so good this is so good and it's so perfect for the fairies too like they did it for the wing stalls there's some wing stalls whose wings actually do fold down like this like that's what their mechanism does instead of flapping or flapping that way or this way they just kind of go down like a moth and i love that i think it's beautiful but it's the tynix stalls and the tynix stall like their, their wings just don't do that so it, it's just kind of weird it's cute but it's just kind of weird these are just perfect they're perfect these dolls are so cool the only thing that would make them better or the thing that would make these dolls absolutely perfect so they don't have the best clothing quality but i don't really care because it's the um it's the design from the show like they represent the show character as well i always pick lassida this is my favorite of the dolls by the way um she's not really a big deal character in the show but you know um if they had elbow and wrist articulation these would be like my all-time favorite dolls in my entire collection and no i'm not exaggerating it, it would take that little thing but they are still probably my top 10 like dolls in my collection i feel like a me and me doll would make it i just love them all right um <laughs> here i wrote wrist articulation or lack thereof i meant lack of wrist articulation um okay Ugh. i hate earrings with short posts too because they fall out and get stuck in the hair Anyway, this is Mermaid High doll. There are other dolls that are an example of this, so I'm not I'm trying to like say Mermaid High is bad for this because, um, again, all of these things, uh, uh, the best doll in the world could lack artic wrist articulation and she would still be the best doll in the world. This is just something that I would prefer if they did not do this. And I love Mermaid High. They're amazing. Oh, um, I hate metallic nylon a lot too. Anyway, I don't care. Again, I mentioned this before. Dolls that have the basic five points of articulation or aren't fully articulated, I don't, it doesn't bug me anymore. I'm, it's not that big of a deal to me. It's fine. But when you have elbow articulation and you don't have wrist articulation, these dolls don't have um, movable wrists. They can't twist and they can't hinge. It just defeats the purpose of the elbow articulation almost. These also seem to have that wing joint issue. It's so funny to me too because these dolls are made by the same company as the Live Dolls. And they have great articulation in other places. This could be the, the the shape of the back of this joint is actually kind of embarrassing. Like that's a fundamental misunderstanding of how joints work. That's why it's an obtuse angle there. But you know, like mostly they're fine. Um, but 
I just can't get behind lacking wrist articulation when you have elbow articulation. It's just weird. You can't, you will come to realize fast if you're trying to pose these dolls that you need wrist articulation to make elbow articulation make sense. It's just kind of weird. I just, and Winx dolls, most of them have this style. Well, most of them are like from Europe or the Mattel ones. So um, if you're used to the Jack specific dolls, these Jack specific dolls have like monster high style joints, but these are these like Gumby joints. Like I was mentioning her legs were. I like these, they're wire joints. Unfortunately, wire joints can break over time if you use them too much or if you leave them posed for too long, they can snap and that's not great. But I like the style of joint in general. I think they're fine. Um, but the wrists don't move, you know? And that really takes away a lot of posing potential. But a saving grace here is that you can bend this way to have the wrist facing forward. You can bend this way to have the wrist facing up. Like you have some options. With these, like, I don't know. She can do it too, but at this point, like, I'm just not on board with it. It's just weird. That's also very weird. See, why are the, the elbows are carved correctly, but the knees aren't, I don't know. Um, It's not that big of a deal to me again. Like articulation isn't a deal breaker for me anymore. It used to be, but it's not anymore. But the, the wrist thing is just so bizarre and it makes posing really, really difficult to look natural. It's just weird to me. Um, All right, two more. They are bad bangs and the eyebrow thing. Um, I'm gonna start with the eyebrow thing because um, it's very short and sweet. This is the, like, this is the Disney designer doll, the Disney limited edition doll thing. Like, I don't know why they have claimed this as their thing, but there's lots of dolls that do this, specifically villain dolls. I hate it. It's so ugly. Dolls have one expression. They will forever have one expression, unless they can move and they're not telling me. In which case, I'm mad at you all. I would love to talk to you and see you move around and be cute. I'm talking to you, Simone. You're looking right at me. Every time I look over, Simone's like staring daggers into me. Anyway. So why would you give them a very specific conditional expression? And what I'm talking about is this. I can't even do that with my eyebrows. Like, I don't, I don't know how much of the population, I guess I kind of can. Having like one eyebrow down and one eyebrow up, it's specifically this that bugs me. Like having a worried expression or a more neutral expression or a more happy expression, I'm fine with that. But this specific expression where they're neutral everywhere else, but then they have this like cocked eyebrow it bugs me it makes them look like um I don't know it makes them look cocky and like mean and that can work for certain dolls like don't get me wrong like I'm sure there's good examples of this like working on a doll but overall just stop doing it just stop I hate it and this is personal preference I'm sure some people love it but you see like and now I can't take pictures of this doll from the front I can't um if, if I were playing with this doll it would really bother me that she's constantly making that face she just looks like like she's I can't say the word on on my YouTube channel, but she looks like she's being like a, a turd. <laughs> I always say turd instead of what I actually mean, but you know, like she just looks like someone I wouldn't talk to, a mean girl, just like constantly. But like, I don't know, it drives me crazy. I really hate it. And every single Tiana limited edition doll that I have has it and it bugs me because Tiana's my favorite and she's not even the type of character to really, like I would never pick that facial expression to represent her. Like Elsa does it in that one image that they use all the time, so I whatever. But Tiana, like she will do it sometimes, but it's not really like her thing. I don't know. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. All right, and bad bangs. That's why this doll's here. There are ways to cut bangs where even even when they've been stored for a while, they'll mostly stay in place. These aren't necessarily straight bangs, but you know, like they're staying in place pretty good. I haven't done anything to them. I haven't had to fix them ever. And there's lots of dolls that I have that have bangs that work. And I used to just hate dolls with bangs because a lot of dolls have this problem. And I don't, I cannot grasp what happened here. I think maybe the Winx Witty Toys dolls just don't have a hair designer on the staff or maybe they just don't pay them. I don't know what's going on. They have rooted these bangs into the part line and then just kind of stuck them down. And I'll be, they're not gonna stay ever because this isn't where bangs go. If you're gonna root bangs, there's a couple of options, but it's usually along the hairline or a little bit under the hairline and then you can pull them forward. This is just, no matter what I do, those are never gonna stay in place correctly. Like I've, I've tried so much. I used to permanently just have a rubber band around her head on display and they still wouldn't stay right. It's just a mess. Oh my God, I can't stand it. I, I don't need to go on forever about that. Anyway. <laughs> that's it those are all of the things that drive me crazy about the dolls um I'm sure there's more that I'll think of after I'm like editing this video and upload this video but I just I just thought this would be kind of a fun video and 
Um, I kind of worry sometimes in my reviews because I am aggressively positive with things that I like. So with my dolls, I'll see something that I can't stand like this and I'll mention it in a review. Like I tend to mention things that bug me in reviews, but I'll quickly write it away because to me, I always give everything the benefit of the doubt and I don't want to hate something, you know, like I don't want to be like, oh, well, this doll has stupid bangs, so it's trash. Um, and like, I don't, I don't want to do that. I don't think it's helping anybody. I think it's just kind of, I don't know. And I never want to point to one thing and say, this is why this doll sucks. Because if it's only one thing, then it's a pretty good doll. Um, but I just thought this would be kind of fun just to talk about things that I don't like. And I'd love to hear what you don't like. And I'm sure a lot of them are going to clash with things that I like about my dolls. Or maybe you love shiny eye paint or you love the click joints, but we're all individual people with individual experiences and preferences and that's what makes the world really cool sometimes other times it makes it awful um but we're talking about dolls here so anything that you hate about dolls that is different from what i hate about dolls it's like cool we can have a conversation about it um and i don't really need anybody to change my mind on any of these things i'm pretty set in them I, it's not like i just decided i didn't like any of these things and i even mentioned those times that somebody else's opinion swayed me and why i think that's kind of annoying um, but anyway, that's it. That's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.